Today, I'll be talking about three problems of non-equivalence. The first one is the source and target language make different distinctions in meaning. The target language may make more or fewer distinctions in meaning than the source language. What one language regards as an important distinction in meaning, another language may not perceive it as relevant. For example, in Arabic, there is a difference between jalasa and qada. When we say jalasa, it means that he or she was lying down and then they sit down. Whereas qada, it means that they started as standing up and then they sit down. This distinction does not exist in English. Also, the two words matar and ghaith. In the Holy Quran, matar was used negatively, whereas ghaith was used positively. Sana and am have the same distinction. In English, we have three pronouns, he, she, and it where it is for the inanimate. In Arabic, we do not have an equivalent for it. Uh, simply, it is either he or she in Arabic. So if we, we talk about the, the table, tawla, we can use the pronoun hiya, murabba. It's exactly the same as she. Also in English, they, do not dis uh, they have distinction between cool and cold as different levels of temperature, where in Arabic, we do not have such a difference. The difference between long and tall makes it even more complicated because uh, one of them looks at it as vertical length, whereas the other one is uh, horizontal length. In Arabic, everything, whether it's vertically long or horizontally long, it's tawil. The second problem is that the target language lacks a superordinate. The target language may have specific words, heponyms, but no general word superordinate to head the semantic field. For example, Russian has no ready equivalent for facilities, meaning any equipment or building or services that are provided for a particular activity or purpose. It does, however, have several specific words and expressions which can be thought of as types of facilities. In Arabic, we have the word baquliyat, which include hummus, full, fasulia, etc. In English, we have equivalents for hummus, full, and fasulia, but we don't have the superordinate word baquliyat. The same for mawalih, which uh, includes anything that is salty in Arabic. In English, they have salty stuff, but they don't have the superordinate word for mawalih. In English, they have the word accessories. For example, for, for a person, accessories would be something like the watch, the ring, the earring, or the uh, bracelet. In Arabic, we have sa'a, khatim, uh, halaq, and swara, but we don't have a superordinate for all of these that is equivalent to accessories. The last uh, problem of non-equivalence that we need to talk about today is the target language lacks a, a specific term, heponym. More commonly, languages tend to have general words, superordinate, but lack specific ones, heponyms since each language makes only those distinctions in meaning which seem relevant to its particular environment. Here we have many, many examples. For example, in English, they have only plural, which means to and above. In Arabic, we have distinctions. We have muthanna, dual, and we have jama, plural. In English, they differentiate between a toe and a finger. In Arabic, we don't have any differentiation. Both of them is Isba or our Isba. Uh, Arabic uses different words for wear, yelbis. So we have the word yelbis, yantail, if it is for a shoes, yatamir, if it is for a hat, whereas English only uses one word, which is wear for all of these parts of the body. English differentiates between up and above. Arabic have one Arabic has only one word that is fawq. Again, English differentiates between under and down, whereas Arabic have has only one word that is 